Good evening. Hi, Mots Othman, and thanks for joining me this Monday on 7 Edition. The headlines. Tun S. Sami Velu sued by own son over mental state. Foreign source could be cause of polio's return. And at least five dead in New Zealand volcanic eruption. Sri S. Velpari has filed an originating summon against his father, former Works Minister Tun S. Sambivelu, to determine his mental state through an inquiry. The suit will determine if the 82-year-old former MIC president has a mental disorder that would cause him to be unable to manage himself and his affairs. In media reports, Datu Sri S. Velpari was quoted as saying that his father had been diagnosed with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease in 2017. The former MIC president suffers from poor recall and registration of events. Datu Sri S. Velpari claims that he wants legal authority to defend his father and himself after both of them were sued by another party. The latter denies that he filed the lawsuit to gain control of his father's assets. He further explained that as of 2017, he had been assisting his father to manage his estate and had used his own funds in the process. Tun Samivelu was the former member of parliament for Sungai Siput and one of the longest serving cabinet ministers. Malaysia is not aware of the settlement between Goldman Sachs Group Inc. and the U.S. Department of Justice amounting to some 2 billion ringgit. Finance Minister Lim Gwon Eng said the government will continue to pursue legal action on the matter to recover funds lost through the 1MDB financial scandal. Saya telah ditanya perkara ini dan uh, pihak Malaysia tidak tahu tentang perkembangan sedemikian. Uh, saya ingat semua ingat bahawa mereka telah uh, terbitkan bond sebanyak 6.5 bilion US dollar. Dan mendapat itu akni itu yuran hampir 600 juta US dollar. Dan tuntutan yang dibuat oleh Malaysia ialah kalau kita ambil kira kerugian dan sebagainya ialah 7.5 bilion US dollar. Tapi difahamkan bahawa laporan menyatakan mereka hendak penyelesaian dan sedia bayar 1.5 bilion hingga 2 bilion US dollar kepada pihak berkuasa Amerika Syarikat. Uh, Untuk kerajaan Malaysia kita tidak tahu tentang perkara ini. Kementerian pun tidak tahu dan saya pun ada hubung program negara. Program negara pun sebut beliau tidak tahu tentang perkara ini dan kedudukan Malaysia ialah kita akan teruskan tindakan jenayah yang kita ambil ke atas Goldman Sachs yang kita harap dapat didengar pada tahun depan. Last November, Lim demanded that Goldman Sachs return 588 million US dollars it had received in commissions from 1MDB for raising 6.5 billion US dollars in bonds for the state fund in 2012 and 2013. On September 25th, Goldman Sachs president and chief operating officer John Waldron said the bank was trying to recover the stolen money for Malaysia. To date, Malaysia had filed criminal charges against 17 current and former directors at subsidiaries of Goldman Sachs Group, Inc. Former Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib Razak told the High Court today he had bought a 466,000 ringgit watch at a Chanel boutique in Honolulu, US with his credit card as a birthday present for his wife, Datin Sri Rosma Manso. The former premier was testifying at his SRC trial where he has been charged with misappropriating 42 million ringgit in SRC international funds. He also told the court he spent 3.2 million ringgit in 2014 at a jewelry shop in Sardinia, Italy to purchase jewelry as a gift for the wife of a Middle East dignitary. On January 2016, he spent 127,000 ringgit at the Shangri-La Hotel in Bangkok while on a private vacation. He explained that while on holiday, he had also met with Thai Prime Minister Prayut chan to discuss about how the Thai government can help to address flooding in Malaysia. 
The Pakan Member of Parliament said he had the right to make a claim for the expenses incurred from the government, but chose to bear it as he did not want to complicate matters. The polio virus, which infected a three-month-old boy in Tuaran Sabah, is suspected to be caused by foreign source. Health Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Zulkifli Ahmad said initial investigation showed the baby and his family have no records of travelling overseas previously. Yesterday, the ministry confirmed a baby was infected with the disease, which is the first polio case in the nation in nearly three decades. He has been confirmed to be infected with the vaccine-derived polio virus type 1 on Friday. The infant, who was admitted with a high fever, is still being treated in the isolation ward and is reported stable. Dia ada dua lah. Ya, sama ada. Datangnya daripada outside. The strain itself is Filipino. The strain itself is Filipino. How it gets to is 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 anybody's guess. It could very well be yang datang as whatever visitor ke apa ke. Uh, itu satu source of it, ya. Ataupun, bagaimana saya, could be people from, uh, or could be yeah. travel. Uh. The family could have also travel outside. Itu kita tidak dapat kepastian, Dr. Chong. There's no history of travel. Uh, no history no, of travel, kan? No There's no history of traveling. Yeah. So, we look at the possibility of people, people coming. Yeah, the possibility of um, visit people, visit dari luar masuk pun, itu yang paling menasabah. Yeah, and you must also know that the vendani can be can can remain for very long. Dia 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 boleh dia boleh kekal hidup, and they can mutate pula lagi. So itu semua yang kita kena lebih berhati-hati. Yeah, they can go mutation. Yeah, so so sangat sangat mustahak supaya parents semua tahu pentingnya untuk anak mereka diberikan imunisasi dan vaksinasi. Yeah. He added that the infant could have been infected with the polio virus before getting his second vaccination. As such, he urged parents to complete the three-dosage polio vaccination for the children as recommended for their protection. Malaysia's last polio case was in 1992, before it was declared polio-free in 2000, together with other Western Pacific region countries. The Customs Department has crippled an international drug syndicate with the arrest of four men and seizure of drugs worth a whopping 5 million ringgit last week. The drugs were smuggled into the country from Karachi, Pakistan and hidden inside the door frames of six shipping containers. Customs Deputy Director General Dato Abdul Latif Abdul Kadeh said the drugs believed to be ketamine were discovered during a raid at the warehouse in Batu Caves, Salago on December 2nd. Oh, bagi custom saya rasa first time lah kita jumpa cara modus operandi yang macam ni. Nampaknya mereka menggunakan apa cara jiwa sekalipun lah. Selalunya mereka meletakkan dalam barang yang lain. Tapi ini dia meletakkan pada struktur kontena isap. Dan ini salah satu kes yang menarik. Dan kontena ini kita akan rampas, memang kita dalam tahun, untuk dijadikan satu kajian ikut uh, Four local men were also arrested during the raid. Investigations revealed that some 42 kilograms of ketamine were packed inside 108, 168 plastic boxes and hidden inside the door frames of the shipping containers carrying used clothes. Authorities are now looking for two Pakistan nationals known as Muhammad Fase Khan and Muhammad Bilal Malik to assist in investigations. In another drug bust, Penang police have cracked down a drug processing syndicate in the state and arrested five people, including a married couple believed to be the mastermind. Various types of drugs worth nearly 400,000 ringgit were seized during the operation. Police raided a house in Kapalabatas at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, where they detained four men and a woman aged between 22 and 49 following months of surveillance. The couple were believed to have been renting the house since two years ago and started the illegal activity about a year in. 
Among the drugs seized included over 13,000 grams of heroin worth over 180,000 ringgit, 1,540 grams of suspected heroin-based drugs, caffeine powder and 400 aramin-5 pills. About 121 live bullets of various sizes, two cars, two motorcycles and nearly 4,000 ringgit in cash were also seized. The five suspects have been remanded under the Criminal Procedures Code for investigation under the Dangerous Drugs Act and the Firearms Act. Meanwhile, the General Operations Force in Kuching, Sarawak, seized various types of contraband cigarettes valued at more than 1.4 million ringgit during an operation at a go-down in Batu Kitang at 2.30 p.m. yesterday. The raiding party took about 30 minutes to force open the door as it was properly secured. No arrests were made, but the team discovered 7,650 cartons of cigarettes of various brands where taxes had not been paid. The cigarettes were believed to have been smuggled from a neighboring country for distribution in the local market. The Dewan Rakyat has received a notice from the Election Commission EC indicating a vacancy for Kimani's parliamentary seat beginning tomorrow. The vacancy was following a ruling by the federal court to uphold the election court's decision to declare the Kimani's election result as null and void. In a statement, Speaker Tan Sri Muhammad Arif Muhammad Yusof said a by-election will be conducted in Kimani's within the next 60 days. Last week, the federal court upheld the election court's decision, declaring the May 2018 results for the Kimani seat as null and void. Former Foreign Minister Datuk Sri Anifa Aman previously retained Kimani's by a slim 156 vote majority after he gained 11,942 votes against Datuk Karim Bujang's 11,786 votes in a three cornered fight. The Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation APEC 2020 senior officials meeting opened today with a focus on the shared prosperity agenda. Its chairman, Hairil Yahri Yaqub, said this was in line with the APEC commitment to redefine the role of trade and investment towards a more inclusive socio economic development. Malaysia, a host, convened the meeting at the Langkawi International Convention Centre this morning by inviting all 21 APEC nations to discuss current economic challenges. Every economy, I believe, has been undertaking one or another policy to provide a better living for its citizens. And there are businesses already taking larger responsibility in contributing to a better model of society. We just have to consolidate this efforts in Malaysia's post year. In addition, Charting of APEC and post-2020 vision could not have provided a better opportunity for APEC to demonstrate its seriousness, seriousness in addressing the current economic turmoil. He added that APEC can play a role in overcoming negative perception about investment and trade liberalization that has been putting pressure on equitable prosperity in this region. Environmental sustainability and climate change were also given the spotlight. Since APEC started 30 years ago, the region's economy grew from 23.5 trillion US dollars in 1990 to 66.2 trillion US dollars in 2018, an average of 3.7% per year. APEC 2020 will be a historic one. The last time it was hosted in Malaysia was in 1998, also under the leadership of Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad. We'll be taking a short break, but coming up, pageant fans disappointed over Miss Universe mix-up. Details next. Thank you for staying with us. Desperate efforts are underway to locate any additional survivors of a deadly volcanic eruption on New Zealand's White Island on Monday, which killed at least five people and injured at least a dozen more. Now, more casualties are feared on White Island and police have declared no-fly zone in the region as conditions prove to be too risky for rescuers. The eruption took place with little warning early Monday afternoon, local time, while dozens of tourists from nearby cruise ship Ovation of the Seas were touring the volcano. 
About 100 people, New Zealanders as well as foreigners, were seen near the rim of the crater minutes before the eruption. So far, 23 people have been evacuated from the island since the eruption, all with some degree of injuries. The five who have since died were among the evacuees. There has been no further communication from the island since the evacuations, but at least 10 people are believed to still be ashore. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said police had launched a search and rescue operation, but falling ash was hampering attempts to get to the site. In the meantime, authorities say there seemed to be no danger for people in coastal areas farther away. White Island, also known as Wakari, is one of the country's most active volcanoes. Finnish politician Sana Marin is set to become the world's youngest sitting prime minister. The 34-year-old transportation minister will also become the country's youngest ever prime minister when she is sworn in on Tuesday. Marin, whose party, the Social Democrats, serves as the long largest party in a five-member governing coalition, narrowly won a vote among Social Democrat lawmakers on Sunday. She replaces outgoing prime minister Antti Rin, who resigned on Tuesday after losing the confidence of a coalition member over his handling of a postal strike. Marine, who is also Finland's third female governor, government leader, rose through the ranks after leading the city council of her industrial hometown, Tempere, where she was 27. Next young leaders are Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, is 39, while Ukrainian Prime Premier Oletsky Honstaruk is 35. Turkish police used tear gas and force to break up a demonstration by hundreds of women and arrested almost a dozen of them in Istanbul on Sunday, who had gathered in the city of Kardikoy district to protest violence against women. The brutality occurred when Turkish women were performing a coordinated anti-rape routine originating from Chile that has become an international feminist anthem. Three hundred women came to enact a rapist in your path, which was first performed late in November in Santiago, Chile, amid anti-government protests against rising social inequality in the Latin American country. It was created by Chilean group Las Tesis and went viral, performed across Latin America as well as Spain, France and India. The chant defends rape victims and holds the police and the legal system partially responsible for systematic violence against women, especially in countries in Turkey where this prevails. In one key section, the women chant, the rapist is you, to reject the notion that victims bear any responsibility when they are raped. According to the Argentine news site InfoB, Turkish police consider the lyrics of the protest song unacceptable. They have confiscated the protesters' megaphone and as much as six protesters were detained during the routine. The killing of a 20-year-old university student who was stabbed to death by an escaped convict earlier this month in northern Turkey has fueled a long-standing discussion of femicide in the country. Now let's hop on to Clickbait, where we take a look at what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. Earlier today, Malaysians nationwide were delighted with the news that our Miss Universe 2019 representative Shweta Sekwon won the national costume competition. And everyone through thought Steve Harvey is probably facing his 2015 nightmare again. However, the good news was sadly short-lived when Harvey, who initially announced Miss Philippines as the winner, was actually right after all. It was understood that Miss Philippines, who won the award, can't wear her costume for the interview as she was included in the top 20. That was why Miss Malaysia was invited on stage to show off her costume. And this happened. Philippines. Uh, this is it right here. I thought I had on some flat, but girl, you just, woo, cake and oranges and potato chips. This is a lot. Yes. It's not Philippines, it's Malaysia. Okay, well, let me explain something to you. I just read that in the teleprompter. Y'all were doing this to me. I can 
reading it said now, they're trying to fix it now. See, this is what they did to me back in 2015, playing it short like that. This is Malaysia. I really love this national costume of Malaysia. Not long after, the Miss Universe official Twitter account clarified in a tweet that Miss Philippines is the rightful winner of the category. The mix-up indeed got hashtag Miss Malaysia 2019 trending at number one today, which saw Malaysians disappointed at the organizers for being unprofessional for such a silly mistake. And of course, Filipinos too joined the bandwagon, raining spite on the organizers, saying how Miss Philippines is always part of a blunder in the competition and how they'll never see Miss Universe the same ever again. Miss Universe 2003 winner Elaine Daly also expressed her dismay on her Facebook page over the confusion, saying that after exchanging emails with the pageant's president, Paula Sugat, Sugat clarified that Miss Philippines won the online voting, but it was the producing staff backstage that picked Miss Malaysia as their favorite and wanted to showcase her on stage. For the main highlight of the event, it was Miss South Africa, 26-year-old Zozi Bini Tunzi, who was crowned Miss Universe 2019, followed by Puerto Rico and Mexico at first and second runner-up. Now updated as of 7 p.m., here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today. Let's take a short break, but when we return, Associate Professor wins first eSports gold for Malaysia. Stay with us. And we're back. The World Bank Group has revised Malaysia's 2020 gross domestic product GDP growth down from 4.6% to 4.5%. Its lead economist for Malaysia, Richard Record, said the projection was largely due to weaker than anticipated investment and export growth in the third quarter this year. We'd expect private consumption to be the primary anchor of growth. Um, we also expect to see a, a return to positive contributions in terms of trade and investment, although you know, that performance will still be relatively subdued given the, the uncertainties around global. It was made after the launch of World Bank's 21st edition of Malaysia Economic Monitor, Making Ends Meet. Record said in the public sector, the planned rationalization of government operating expenditure will continue to weigh on the contribution from government consumption, which is projected to grow at 1.8% next year. Meanwhile, overall investment activity is projected to expand at 1.4%. Bursa Malaysia finished lower today on subdued sentiments as weak export data from China signaled weakness for the broader Asian economy. The benchmark FBM KLCI fell 5.73 points to 1,562.71 from Friday's close. On to stocks to watch. MMC Corporation has been awarded a 131.4 million ringgit engineering, procurement, construction and con commissioning contract by Petronas Gasperhad, which is expected to boost MMC's total outstanding order book. Now, besides that, the company's ports and logistics segment is expected to benefit from the resilient outlook in the region's port sector, underpinned by investments in the manufacturing sector that generates tremendous inbound and outbound throughput. Last but not least, Comfort Rubber Gloves Industry Sinir Berha's earnings prospect is expected to remain upbeat due to its ongoing capacity expansion, research and development efforts in growing sales as well as rising demand for its specifically gross gloves. Its progressive capacity expansion seems timely to fulfill growing demand which could help lift sales volumes.
On to the podium, day nine of the 2019 SEA Games. The National Karate squad surpassed the three gold medal target set by the Malaysia Karate Federation in the competition after they successfully bagged another two gold through men's kumite under 75 kilograms and men's kata team during the last day of the sport earlier this afternoon. Overall, the Malaysian Karate contingent took home four gold and three silver medals, securing themselves as the champions of the sport in 2019 SEA Games. The highlights. A karate gold medalist in the 2017 SEA Games, Ar Sharbendran, seemed to have faced an effortless fight against his Thailand opponent, Muntin Songwut, when he clinched a 3-0 victory. Uh, first of all, I like to thank my coach, Coach Andres, who prepared me. about I was out for eight months, so the short time, in short time to after August to come back again in like a December is not really easy. Meanwhile, in the Ben's Kata team event, Rose Emmanuel Leong, Ivan Oh Tiang Wei, and Ho Thompson as champions. The trio scored 24.3 points, giving the Indonesian team at silver with 23.98. I'm happy, I'm happy for myself and also for my team and for the whole team, the whole Malaysian team that we can get the, the fourth goal. Yeah. And uh, by getting fourth goal again, I'm saying that this means that we are still the powerhouse of karate and I believe in Southeast Asia. The first two gold was previously claimed through karate exponents S. Prem Kumar and P. Madhuri. Over in archery, the Malaysian contingent struck the nation's first archery gold after Juwaidi Mazuki, Zulfafli Ruslan and Shahrizan Jaffa won the men's team compound event at the Angeles Field in Clark, trashing Vietnam 224-216 in the final. Meanwhile, Malaysia won their first ever gold medal in the new medal sport under the game category, Hearthstone. 29-year-old Dr. Yu Weng Kin created history as the first Malaysian to win the medal after defeating Thailand's Popian Werit 3-1 in the finals. The associate professor from Harit Wat University, Malaysia, was knocked out of the upper bracket by Singapore's Chu Kai Kiat. However, he managed to climb back to the finals through the lower brackets, defeating the Singaporean again in the lower bracket finals 3-1. The gold medal was Malaysia's second eSport medal in the Philippines after the Mobile Legends Bang Bang contingent won bronze on Sunday. Malaysia also narrowly missed the podium finish in the game category Arena of Valor as they finished fourth. Esports was contested as a medal event for the first time at the biennial SEA Games, with the other games being Dota 2, StarCraft 2, and Tekken 7. Now let's take a look at the current standings as of 7.40 p.m. The Malaysian contingent to the Philippines SEA Games has amassed 48 gold, 49 silver, and 64 bronze medals, maintaining its sixth spot among 11 participating nations.